What's up, guys? It's Chris here to do a bit of some year-end awards. I plan on talking about all these um, boxing MMA slash awards on tomorrow's Science and Finance Radio Show, but I just want to give a little preview here um, of what I'm going to be discussing. And, you know, if you guys are interested, you can, of course, I want to hear you guys' thoughts on the video comment section, but uh, if you guys have time tomorrow and you're interested in uh, giving your thoughts on air, we would love to hear you guys call into the show and, uh, you know, give your uh, picks for who you choose for these categories and why. I'm going to do a boxing one first. Um, oh, also, you know, you guys see this video today. It's Christmas. Hope you guys are having a good Christmas. Mine's going well so far. Um, going to start off with a knockout of the year. Quite a few nominees here. Um, you got Dimitri Pirog against Daniel Jacobs. Ponce de Leon against Antonio Escalante. Saul Canelo Alvarez against Carlos Baldemir. Sergio Martinez, Paul Williams. David Lemieux, Hector Camacho Jr., Lucian Boutte, Edison Miranda, and Freddie Hernandez against Chopped Up Corley. Personally, I went with Martinez Williams, Sergio Martinez knocking out Paul Williams. Two reasons. It was a spectacular knockout, goes without saying, but also it um unexpected. You know, after the first fight, I think most fans expected another war. A lot of fans were split on who to pick. High level of a uh, top of the game, you know, level of opposition or, you know, type talent. Top fighters in the game, so um, yeah, just unexpected, high level of talent in the ring, and um, the aestheticness of it, beautiful knockout. So, Sergio Martinez for Paul Williams is my choice. Fight of the year, Giovanni Segura against Ivan Calderon, Ricky Burns, Rocky Martinez, I should have said, and the nominees are, you know, but whatever. Um, Humberto Soto, and Urbano Antilion, Juan Manuel Marquez, Michael Casitas, Rafael Marquez, Juan Manuel Lopez, Amir Khan, Marcos Maidana, Antonio Escalante, Mickey Roman, Carl Frosch, Mikhail Kessler, and Yoni Perez, Abner Marez. Uh, full disclosure, I have yet to see all these fights. I haven't seen Segura call their own, Burns Martinez, or Soto Antilion yet. I've heard all three of them could easily be the decision or the choice for the fight of the year. If any of you believe that's the case, please let me know why. would love to hear it. As for myself personally, I went with the Mirkon Marcos Maidana. Maybe it was because one of the last it was one of the last fights I saw this year, but um had a couple of reasons. One, like I mentioned with Martinez Williams, high um top of the division talent, two of the top guys at 140. And you know, exciting fight. And they answered questions, you know, and it answered questions for Amir Khan for the most part. And had a good storyline progression. Khan came out early, dominated. Maidana took over some rounds, mid-rounds. Um, Khan came back, got control. And, of course, Maidana hurt Khan bad in the 10th. And Khan had to survive the last couple of rounds, which he was able to do so. So had a lot of the um, criteria, I think, that you would mark off for a fight of the year. High level of opposition. Um, fight went back and forth action. And, you know, um, aside from a knockout, I think it had a good ending. Fighter of the year. Nominees. Sergio Martinez, Manny Pacquiao, Andre Ward. Um, I put Thomas Adamek and the Klitschko brothers in there as well. Adamek had four fights, um, the big one being Chris Ariola. I wouldn't choose him, but you can put him in the list. And the Klitschkos, although I wouldn't choose either as well, they both dominated their opposition, you know, in one-sided fights, although their level of opposition, through no fault of their own, isn't that high. Personally, I'd go with Sergio Martinez. I think this is pretty much unanimous. I think most people would um, beat Kelly Pavlik earlier in the year to win the middleweight title. And then, as I mentioned earlier, knocked out Paul Williams in their rematch in a fight that um, most expected to be like their first fight, but wasn't. So Sergio Martinez, you know, um, goes without saying, I think he had the best year. You know, I'm sure you can make cases for other guys as well, including the guys I mentioned, but my personal choice, definitely Sergio Martinez. Most disappointing fight. These are fights that I think were um, just not good fights. Or, you know, didn't live up to the expectations. Paul Williams, Kermit Cintron. That's mostly for the way it ended. Very anticlimactic ending. Kind of sucked. Um, in all honesty. Andre Ward, Alan Green. Alan Green talked a lot of trash going into that fight. Unfortunately, he didn't bring it in the ring. And it was an ugly fight. Arthur Abraham, Andre Durrell. Um, I only put this in the list for the way it ended. 
another anticlimactic ending, climactic ending, with you know Darrell getting knocked down and getting hit and the way it ended. So that's why I put it there because it was a disappointing end. Manny Pacquiao, Joshua Claudi. Joshua Claudi didn't really come to fight. He really didn't do much. He didn't offer much uh, of a, you know, level R. He didn't offer up level much opposition against Manny Pacquiao. So, you know, for a pay-per-view fight, Cowboy Stadium just wasn't a good fight for Manny Pacquiao, a good showcase fight, but uh, Joshua Claudi just didn't bring it. Shane, Shane Mosley, Floyd Mayweather. Um... Somewhat similar to Pacquiao Claudi. Granted, Shane did hurt Floyd in the second round. Um, almost had him out of there, maybe. But after that, it was all Floyd. Credit to Floyd Mayweather, of course, for taking over the fight and controlling the rest of the way. But uh, just disappointing that it, after the second round, it was all Floyd. And Shane Mosey really didn't have much left to offer. Although, like I said, that credit goes to that for Floyd Mayweather as well. But, uh, you know, for a pay-per-view fight, you would hope for more. Another Shane Mosey fight, Shane Mosey, Sergio Mora, a fight that most fans thought should have been on pay-per-view. Granted, the undercard ended up being good, but um, the main event, people weren't looking forward to it, and the fight lived up to its um, below-level expectations. Ugly fight, controversial decision, not much more to say about it. Carl Froch, Arthur Abraham, only put this on here, thought it was going to be one of the better fights in the Super Stakes thus far, thought it would be a real war. Carl the Cobra Frost dominated and Abraham, much like uh, Joshua Claudi, just didn't really bring it. So, uh, man, Alan Green and, you know, other fights I mentioned. And David Hay, the Harrison, another fight. Same thing. Harrison talked a lot of trash. Come fight night, he did nothing but stood like a heavy bag until the fight was stopped in what I believe was the third round. So, my multi pointy fight, although I wasn't looking forward to it, I'd go with Mosley, Mora. Terrible fight. Decision, make whatever you, uh, of it what you will. Um, if you didn't see it, don't go out of your way to see it. If you did see it, you'll probably never watch it again. <laughs> Lastly, story of the year. These are just, I think, the stories that had the biggest impact or dominated the year. In boxing, um, nominees would be the Super Six. You know, with the fallouts of Jermaine Taylor, Mikael Kessler, um, Andre Durrell. You know, of course, we had some fights there as well. Controversies with Darrell Abraham and Darrell not fighting Ward. Replacements with Glenn Johnson going in. So um, just a lot of stuff going on in and out of the ring with the Super Six. Um, Sergio Martinez's ascension. You know, um, like I said, he beat Pavlik, he beat Williams. And now he's in the pound for pound debate discussion top three. So um, it's just something that I think that was a bit unexpected. So, And it was a, you know, a good storyline. Um, Hopkins-Pascal fight. Maybe because it was the last fight I saw this year, boxing-wise. But controversial decision um, to some. Hopkins could have been the oldest man to win a middleweight title or a title. Almost did it. A lot of people think he should have um, or should have gotten it. So, uh, you know, fans are still talking about it. Um, the death of Edwin Valero happened earlier in the year, so it's kind of hard to remember that it happened this year, but Guy that was undefeated, all his wins by knockout. Um, you know, in unfortunate circumstances to his death and all everything surrounding it. You know, now he's going to go down in boxing lore as one of those myths, those legends like uh, Salvador Sanchez. So definitely uh, something that, even if fans aren't still talking about as much now, um, in the annals of, annals of time in the history of boxing, it's going to be a story that uh, is always um, brought up. And lastly, but not leastly, Something that's becoming a yearly debate, it seems like, or discussion. Um, the fact that there was no Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight, once again. I said it before, I said it again. I don't have anything to really say about this fight until it's made. I'm not going to point fingers at who's to blame, but every time one of these guys fights someone that's not the other, it's always talked about and, you know, it's always brought to the forefront. Both hardcore, casual, boxing fans and everyone else. So, my choice, I would go with the Super 6 because it had stuff both in the ring and out of the ring. Um, had some decent fights, had some not so good fights, um, but you know, it's just a story that carried out throughout the entire year, and we've still got more to come from it. So, um, yeah, Super Six would be my story of the year in boxing. So, anyways, that's it for now. Want to hear your guys' thoughts on a, uh, you know, who you choose in these categories and why? And like I said, hopefully you guys turn to the radio show tomorrow and uh, call in and give your thoughts as well. 
put the link to the radio show in the information part of the video as usual, as well as link to my Twitter. And um, until then, and keep an eye out for my MMA video of this same kind of uh, stuff, which will be coming up very shortly. But until then, guys, I'm out.